Howdy. And there are very few properties that has such appeal and recognition as Lord of the Rings. This great franchise spans Wait. movies, books, and of course, games. <laughs> Did you say Lord of the Rings? Uh, yeah. Are we gonna ignore the fact that you just punched me in the mouth? You know what happens when I get excited. Granted, but I was about to start talking about Lord of the Rings games. Without me, young Gimli. He is my favorite character. How dare you try and talk about Lord of the Rings without me? Okay, you can join. Just let me get some ice from my jaw and we can get started. No one cares about your jaw. Let's go. As the title suggests, today me and my wife are going to be talking about several Lord of the Rings games. Now there was a mountain of games to choose from, but today we will be reviewing three of them. Those games being Lego Lord of the Rings, War in the North, and Shadow of Mordor. That one's my favorite. So in no particular order, let's hop into it with the first game. That one obviously being the most popular game around the franchise, freaking Shadow of Mordor. We didn't want to play Shadow of War until we beat the first one. The footage you're about to see, young laddie, is me playing. As I said earlier, this is my favorite Lord of the Rings game. I was interested introduced to this game when Longbrow and I were dating, and he knew how much I enjoyed Lord of the Rings, so he let me borrow this game. And that's when the addiction started. I'd forgotten about it with time like all things, but I'm glad I found it again because this, this is one of the only games I'll play regardless if uh, Longbrow is with me or not. I play for hours at a time. In the middle of night, you name it, and I'm killing the orc scum. This game is fun for me because I get a huge amount of thrills by being in the middle of a huge exciting battle where there's so much to comprehend, it's insane. The stress is intense, but I love that. That's something this game does great. It uses the combat system popularized by the Batman Arkham games, but adds a lot of flair into it. It's beyond fun being surrounded by a mountain of orcs and working your way through them one by one until only one remains. You. And that's the kind of games I have the most fun with. In Skyrim, I just seek the danger, so I want to rush headfirst in any battle because that's why I play games, to stress out. Thinking about it, that's probably why you love Call of Duty Zombies so much. Exactly! The challenge is great and having an option to leave if my butt's about to get wrecked only return later, a stronger man or a woman or this Aragorn looking dude, I can just get my revenge. There is skill trees, tons to explore and discover, and the mechanics were picked perfectly for this kind of game. Taking a mix of Assassin's Creed inspired exploration, and like I said, Batman inspired combat, with great stealth mix in there as well. This is just a great game we have here, as simple as that. The story is simple but great, it fits in perfectly with the established lore, and even has clever moments like how the game teaches you to do stealth attacks. Well, let's not forget. <laughs> Happy anniversary, my love. Oh, oh, come on, that's cute. And the nemesis system is definitely the crowning jewel of this game, where being killed by an orc will promote him to a higher rank. And they actually reference the fact that they killed you, and they can keep climbing and growing even stronger and stronger, gaining new mechanics to do more damage to them and such. It adds so much to such simple, dumb orcs. Oh yeah, the orcs. They are just like the ones from the movie, but even dumber and more memorable. Funny story, I used to have a recurring dream where I would hear drums of war and look out my window to see a huge army of orcs attacking my house. So I would run and hide. It was one of the scariest dreams I have ever had. So killing them with no mercy is a definition of therapy. Well, I have never had anything like that, but I used to run around my backyard with sticks and pretend to do this right here. This game allows you to do that. I also really love that it's rated M. Can I say that real fast? It takes the violence to the next level, something the movies couldn't really do to keep that PG-13 rating. This is an obvious recommendation, dude. No doubt. It's popular for a reason. Shadow of Mordor. What isn't great about this game? It's challenging, fun to play, and all around a great game. And who knows? If this video is well received, Shadow of War might be in a potential part two or three. Like I said, who knows? There's a mountain of games to choose from. We have plenty of options. But for now, let's move on to the second game, Lord of the Rings War in the North. War in the North is a very frustrating game. Why? Because getting your hands on the dang thing is a headache and a half. You can't purchase it anywhere on a digital store. Why? Couldn't tell ya. I found conflicting reports. Anywhere from legal issues to the fact that just their license ran out. So I had to buy a used PS3 version at vintage stock and it looks like it is sick. But now that I have it in my fingers, how is it? Well, I really enjoyed my time with it so far, I'll tell you that much. I played it with my wife because it has local co-op. 
and we had so much fun playing together. Now we only played around three and a half hours or so, but from my experience it was a fun standalone game that kept the pace moving with the complimentary story to the movies and fast paced action gameplay. We definitely plan on playing much more of this in the future that's for sure. Now the story of this takes place a few days before Frodo comes to the Prancing Pony and it actually explains why Aragorn is there, which I've always wondered about whenever I watch the movie. Basically you're a group of three people trying to beat Discount Sauron. No seriously, just look at this guy. But other than that, it actually has a unique cast. A new fellowship, as the back of the case so proudly proclaims. We have Discount Aragorn, a super hot, sexy uh, dwarf. <laughs> and this bad A elf who I loved playing. And that's another thing. This game really makes you work as a team. Exactly. The batters are just as large as Shadow of Mordor, but you aren't medieval Batman, so you need help. So in the combat, we had to constantly work together. I had a protective shield I would use to keep Longbrow safe while he mounted a turret, and he would keep me safe with his big axe while I used my magic to take out archers out of his short dwarven reach, since he has limited arrows. Discount Aragorn was there too. Cool. Well, he did save my sorry butt when I went down a few times, so we're cool. It also adds a dialogue system where you can talk to a bird. Okay, this is the best game in the world. He kind of sounds like Gandalf to me, which makes me like him even more. There are even side quests that I discovered. One being super adorable, where you help these two people fall in love. And the dwarf proved his voice actor really cares about this game, because he sold this role perfectly. Heck, all the voice acting is top notch again. This is just a great game here, again. Now when it came out, it got slightly better than average reviews, but people said the combat did get a little bit repetitive, that's something you might want to keep an eye out for. But the main issues were the bugs. When it came out, it was super buggy. Luckily, we played the patch version, so we didn't really run into any bugs, and we had a blast. It's not often I get to play a fun game similar to my precious Shadow Mordor, but this time co-op. Going through the skill trees and picking what I wanted for my team and discussing the tactics to use in a hard fight was really interesting and kept us thinking. The slow mo is cool when you get a final blow, and again, I love my magical elf lady and the whole group of three, actually. Being this thick dwarf, I could destroy the orc scum with my axe, chopping heads off, or provide providing buffs like defensive shouts and stuff to my lovely wife with my dwarven screech. Again, I recommend this game. It is annoying and a headache to get your hands on, but if you can, I think you would have a lot of fun playing through it. I fully plan on playing much more of this on my own, or with my wife of course, and definitely beating it. I 100% plan on making a full video on this game in the future because to me it's very interesting. So that being said, time to move on to the last game. That being LEGO Lord of the Rings. This game is so fun and creative, I really like this little game. I have never I never really liked Legos at all, but this lighthearted game won me over a little bit. That being at the age of 23, so I think I'm a little outside the demographic, but hey, I still had a lot of fun with this one. Again, this game is co-op, so we played it together. And I don't know if it's the fact that I played it with my best friend, that being my wife. Again, I had an amazing time. This game is very simple. It has combat mixed with fun, creative puzzles, where me and her had to discuss the best ways to handle each puzzle. And as Longbrow said, the combat is beyond simple. Swing and jump, that's the basic outline. That doesn't mean it wasn't fun, though seeing the orc scum burst into a million pieces when you kill them might not be as therapeutic to me, but it's still entertaining and always made it fun to land that killing blow. I also really liked how it retold the story of the movies, but they changed a few things to make it a little bit more kin friendly. I think that's fine. I did get a little upset though. I want, oh, it's a coffee instead of a pipe. How cheap. Keep it safe. I don't like you being that close to me, Gandalf. I do. Whoa, he does not get mad like that. Well, there's supposed to be a joke that he... I was like, can hit something, get angry, but he can't show a little pot. I thought or... you were going to say a little leg or something. <laughs> a little leg, yes, please show me a little leg. Uh, I might be a little picky. It even uses the voice clips from the movies, so it's weird seeing a sort of abridged version, like an official abridged version of the story. It is entertaining though. I personally really liked it when they made a split up and handled different aspects of the level, like when I got to play as Gandalf while she had to deal with the ring rights and trying to sneak past them. Or when I was Frodo, avoiding the wraiths and trying to survive while he was Sam, trying his dang best to light those fires to keep me safe. Any game that makes players work together in a unique way always gets a win in my book. So yeah, this game just oozes charm. The simple act of exploring the shower and riding a sheep was fun. Some of the jokes were pretty good too. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> she said 
Wow, that makes all three games we looked at actually good. Well, I'm just as surprised as you are. War of the North was similar to Shadow of Mordor, and of course we have the stepchild that is Lego, but honestly, Lego had so much unique personality to it, it's easily worth your time. Only 20 bucks for a kid-friendly game that even two adults had a blast playing. I wholeheartedly recommend this one as well. Me too. I actually recommend all the games. Again, Lego is something you can have fun playing with your kid or your spouse. Or your best friend. Luckily, mine's one and the same. Shut it. Anyways, that's all three. This was a video I've wanted to make for a long time, and I can't believe how much fun I had playing all of these games. With my beautiful wife, of course. And getting to talk about them with her too. If you guys liked this, I am totally down to do a part two. Or heck, maybe even cover other games in a similar format. Anyways, thanks guys. See ya. Thanks guys. See ya. So you want to go play um, Lego Lorenz or not any of them? We can go play. Let's go. <laughs> it's not often I get to play a game. <laughs> We should put that in the <laughs> flipper at the end. Daughter farts. <laughs> yeah, oh my god.